there and welcome to another week in our garden it's a nice bright day now first before we go down harvesting I'll just show you the cabbages we had under the light which are actually savoy cabbages I've potted them up because the roots were coming out the bottom of the pot now just show you them potted up and then we'll go down and do some harvesting okay it made 11 plants nice short strong plants i'm very pleased with them so we can definitely raise seed under that light right we're just going to pick a few more of these plums it's been a bumper year for us for plums we had none last year and then a bumper crop this year now we've given quite a few away and there's still quite a few to go but Diane says she could do with another basket full so we'll get those done might get pudding for tea so I'm going to pick them and then we'll see you after we've done the pick all right so there's a nice basket of plums Victoria plums really are nice this year small but very nice now we also need to go up and pick about the last of the raspberries and there's a few blackberries there to pick as well but I also want to show you the celeriac on the way up that I've started to clean now this is the celeriac you can see I've cleaned some of the leaves especially the leaves that are not doing anything anymore up round from around the bulb at the bottom or the fruit if you like there I've done those three rows and I'll do that one with you just to show you normally I just take the plant and can you see all these split leaves and old leaves at the bottom you just tear those off and then the bottom swells up a little bit then it makes a makes a better crop Let's do another one. There's a couple here just to show you. Can you see all the all the broken leaves at the bottom and the old dead leaves at the bottom? Need all cleaning off. So you just just go around and rip them off. It smells nice when you're doing it. it smells of celery. That one lot there's mist on there, look, so I'll take that one. Let's do one more for you. Now, if you see like another plant growing up the side like this one was, just rip them out, you don't want them. Okay? Just like that. All the leaves of the compost eats, all good stuff. And there you are. Now, they are nice and green, but I will give them. Uh, a little bit of nitrogen just to give them a boost before the winter probably some dried blood only a handful to the two square yards I don't want a lot and then as the weather changes and gets colder I shall get some barley straw and put a mat down so it protects them from the cold weather okay and now keep they'll keep swelling don't worry they'll do him fine pleased with them this year right we need to pick some raspberries now the, there's still a few raspberries on and this is about the last pick what we'll do now and then we'll cut them off and then these plants here will actually be dug up and we'll burn them and then we're ready for the new plants which are behind them so we'll pick a few and then we'll show you the basket and what we've picked there'll be a few blackberries as well there you are then that's the i think the last pick of our raspberries this year we've had quite a few so we're very happy with them for a drought year we've done very well now there's a, a few blackberries here this is the ordinary blackberry thornless but the fruited quite well so we'll just quickly pick this over there's not a lot on it but we're it's its first season so I'm very pleased with it they're quite heavy berries 
There you are, that's a little pick, the first pick actually of those blackberries. Look quite nice, one or two is a bit greeny but that's fine, die will take those out. Now it's very late afternoon, early evening, it's getting quite cold so that'll be it for today and I'll see you tomorrow. Hello and good afternoon. It's a bit overcast today, I think we had some quite heavy rain in the night, it looks of the the tubs we had quite a bit but that's good I'm pleased we're having a bit of night rain better than daytime. Now of the onions to string what we've harvested this year they've dried out in the shed I have cleaned them a little cleaned them enough for stringing. Now I have shown stringing onions a couple of times but it is time for me to do it so I'll just do these two with you and then it'll be like a refresher if you like. Here's the onions we're going to string. Not the biggest of onions this year but what I found last year. I had some huge onions last year but they didn't store awfully well at all. I think you need a medium size to get good storage out of them. These are the reds that we'll put on the other string. I have rejected a few that well they needed a price for putting a root on really some of them they were really really small but yeah. what what i do is i sort through the onions and put them in rows for quickness more than anything i choose one big one to go on the bottom or larger one not much bigger than that and then five rows of four normally and then that will fill enough on on the string the string is just four pieces with a knot on each end or in that case it's just looped round two lots of two but I was a bit short of cord so I did two two knots okay we hang one up here I get the knot at the top obviously and then what I normally do to start it off I just make a loop and then we'll push the onion, first onion through that loop which will be the big one, the big one. I've done it all before, my apologies for those people who've seen all this and then just wrap it round and push it through one of the lines, okay? There you are, look. If that was a long tag we just cut it off. Then because I've already sorted them in the size I wanted them, I can pick them up and feed them straight on. Now you'll find that some of them look like you could peel them again, but that's there for a reason, so I just leave it on. Unless it falls off, I don't, I don't bother. This is more of an oval onion, these are more difficult to put on than the, the round ones, okay? So you just pick, pick a couple of lines that you haven't used, put your onion in and I just go under, over, round and through. Here we are. And this tail here I just cut off. Not too short because if it goes wrong we've got to rebuild it. There's your large onion there. Pick two Open the cords where you haven't already opened them. There's four, so you should be able to do it. Put your onion through with the neck. Position it nicely. And then I go under the onion. Up. Round. And then through one of the cords, look like that. And then pull down. Make sure it's nice and neat down, tight. And then that long tail would just take that back up. Now, same again. This one will be just here. So just open, open the cords up. Feed it in. Position it roughly. You won't get them positioned every time. And then you go under, round and through and then make sure it's pressed well down okay 
then if it's a long tail cut it off that's not too bad really but we'll cut it anyway keep it tidy it's very important that these these necks of these onions are really really dry because if not it will go for stay okay or get mildew on it so this one's going to sit here a lot so open again position it roughly position it you won't get them all right go under round and through okay and you just keep doing that all the way up always keep pushing those down to keep it tight in the middle else what you'll find is the onions will be hanging too much so now we put four into there and then build it and the onions because I've sorted them will get smaller and smaller as they go up okay do another I'll do another row with you that's the best sort of onion to string is that flattened disc lovely onion to do so we'll just open up put it in you see how those sit better under round and through and push down there you are snip it off same again another nice onion different lining you see this time position it more or less where you'd like it they tend to move a little anyway when you're wrapping them round through one of the strings and push down we'll take that tail off again same again then find another opening that you haven't used which is that one city man nice and firm under round and through and just push it make sure it's nice and tight that's it that's all we do I'll do one more to finish that round That one wants to leave its skin. Well, that I don't like to do that, but it's dropped off on its own, so we'll take it. It'll soon brown up again. So into position, look, and go under, round, and through, and press down. Okay right so I'll take this on I've one two three more rows to put on which will take it to about here it's only a small string so I'll do that and then come back here. Right, I'm on my last row now just two more to pop on you can make them as long as you want but always remember the longer you go they get very very heavy you'll have a good weight of onion on them if you do a full Last year we did some quite big ones, but they were very, very heavy. Always the same. Just one more little onion to go on. And that finishes this string for me then. It's a small one as well. getting my weight on it now just for these two and then always push down nice and tight there's nothing to cut off on that one there you are then as you want them if they'll loosen up eventually a little bit when give them a week or two and they'll be quite loose so you just put the scissors in and cut them off or you just keep turning them and they'll come off but you can take that one and the rest will stay supported because you've wrapped the the neck round like that they're quite good quite firm so that's the brown onion now we'll do one with the red 
and then we'll go and get some right. I have to keep looking down because I know there's a chick in it. There she is, there. We'll just hang this one here for now. That's it. This is cord. Uh, you can use string or cord. I find the cord, if you can get it, is a lot, lot stronger, especially if you're going for some really heavy onions. But these aren't too bad, the strings are fine. Thread it on, put the knot at the top. Again, I've sorted them into the rows. I put a largest one there, and then they're the rows I want to hang them in, so it gets progressively smaller to, as I go up. They're a lovely way to store your onions, and you can keep your eye on them. So again, just make a loop. Look and then we'll put the big one in just pop it in make sure they're all there to hold it what do you want that's better look hold it like that and then I just wrap that round a couple of times. It also just hangs on to that onion as well. And then just put it through. That's it, that'll hang nicely there. We'll just take that tail off and make it tidy. And then, there we go. Two that we haven't used, in we go. Try to position it just on the shoulder of the onion below and it will sit better and then under round open it up as you go round and then just pull it through it's easy then we know that's onions now on when the, or the next one comes above it it really tightens that down and then we just take that off got a lot of neck on it this one but I'm not going to skin it I'm going to use it as it is it's lovely and dry all of them we did have a couple still wet but I rejected those I can't screen those so we we'll bring that one in this is one of those overly ones that are very very difficult to get in to match the others so you have to work a bit with that one and take it round and through. Looks a bit fiddly but once you've done one or two quite simple. Obviously these thick neck ones, well they're not thick, they've got a lot of top on them, they will bulk up more here so what you want to do is keep pushing them down. Yeah, Remember that's your bottom onion and then this one and go at the side like that and that'll sit there take those off just keep pushing down that'll do nicely under round as you go round through and then pull down nice and tight and snip that off be fine. I'll do this row and another row and then just open it up on one that you haven't used. Sit it on not that's going to be nice there. Yep. Yeah. And then on the round and through and tighten them down. That's why I always put a good hook at the top, so when you're pushing down you're not going to drop your onions, they have to be bruised all over the place. Square it up nicely and then we'll start the next one. You see how that overly one is lifting it a little bit out of canter but we'll be alright. There we go here this time. I'll do this row with you and then we'll do the same as we did the others, I'll finish it.
Okay. Uh, we'll go here. Getting some twists in there. Then that'll be fine. Just sit around nice. Not that. Just keep pushing down a little, not too heavy, to bruise them. And then through we go. Cut off. Chickens are unusually quiet today. I think they're all laid in what bit of sun we're getting. This one will go here and we're still we're still struggling with that one that we had that was a funny shape, but it doesn't matter because it's only stringing. Only stringing for storage. So push those down a bit, try and get them, there you are. Now I'll do the next two layers and then come back on the third, okay? There we are, it's just three more to put on there to finish this one. But it's the same all the way. And then a, one more, and then the, we've got a small one. If it looks like the four strings are twisting, just release it and give it a few seconds, just and it'll unspin itself. Okay, it just helps that little bit. And so again, quite heavy now, just these few. So you have to be the strings take quite a bit of opening up when they get a lot of weight on but they're fine at least they're gripping the onions that's it they're through and uh, I'll just cut that little tail so we put it through this is your last chance put it through get it balanced and go under over round and through one of the strings like that okay then just push it down a little old and if there's a little tail just cut it off that's how i string my onions the same as last year and the year before and probably the same next year but it's a good way of storing them now over the next oh, week probably if it's a nice sunny day I should bring them out and hang them up if it looks like rain or it's dull the in the shed they go always go in at night don't leave them out at night yet and then when I think they're nice and dried and ready I should leave them hung in the shed and then we'll take them up to the house and hang them in our storeroom and then Diane will use them as she wants them. Usually the red ones first. Now this is our onion crop for this year. Not the biggest of size but there's enough onions there to take us through I think. We'll, we'll see how we get on with that. But they're nice onions as I said before, the very, very large ones we got last year didn't keep awfully well, so I'm pleased we got some smaller ones that will keep through. Hello everyone, Friday today, we're right down the garden and we're going to do a little bit harvesting for the weekend. Now it's a lovely day, it's about 18 degrees, there's a little bit of wind and it's a bit overcast. And I do believe we're going to get some rain tomorrow and then it's going to get warm again. So everything will start growing again wonderful. 
Now I'm going to harvest the cabbage and two calibris, a few of the late tomatoes and we're going to harvest some of the peppers from the greenhouse at the top. So first of all I'll lift the cabbage and get that cut and ready, okay? Here it is, lovely cabbage. I'll just leave the top there and I'll pick that up later. Now we'll go to the end of this little tunnel and take out Calibrese, very nice. Right, so I'm going to take this one, I'm just going to cut it off the top and then let it shoot out at the side. And another one over there I think. And I'll take this one as well. Now I have sprayed this earlier in the week. I knew there was coming up harvest so I didn't spray again this week. This is for the white fly. Now we've got white fly in the tunnels which is a little bit my own fault because I keep taking the covers off to remove all the dead leaves etc from underneath the cabbages and while I'm doing that the blooming white fly get in and then I put the cover back on and they've got a nice place. I'm using the horticultural soap which is just knocking some down it doesn't knock all down but it does knock some down so if we keep spraying we will and the weather starts to change anyway we will get on top of them. I'm going to just use the secateurs and cut the stem off below this and then hopefully it'll give us some more side shoots that we can use it's quite a job to get to it but we will get there now that's a nice calibrese very tight all nice and green i like that but it's got a hole in the top what I'll find is that will probably dry and crust up and just hope it doesn't go rotten in the middle. If it goes rotten in the middle, let's take the plant out. Right, so we'll take this one as well. Um, now that one hasn't got a hole in the middle, so that will be all right. Leave that to crust over and then that will send some nice side shoots out that we'll be able to cut again. Now these outdoor tomatoes. Remember I put these in very very late but they're starting to turn so I'm going to pick the ones that are turning because if I don't the birds will have them. They've been a bit of a nuisance just lately of picking, well not picking but pecking the tomatoes and leaving as a mess. So we'll take them and finish them in the warmth of the house. Just take that end off lot that's growing on, we don't want that. As you can see, they're cropping very well. So I'll get them picked and show you what we've picked off them, okay? Now there's a few of the tomatoes. You see we've picked them quite early, but they'll soon ripen up in the warmth of the house. The other thing I will do to these tomatoes, now that we're, they're cropping well now and we just want to ripen the crops that's on them, I'm going to take some of the leaves off. I'll take about 50% of the leaves off. I'll show you on this one because it's leaning nicely to show you. Can you see where they've tried to grow again? Look, because they've been stopped, they're even pushing out little shoots on the leaves as well. What I should do is I should take the leaves off about halfway. You see? And that will let, I'll put those there, that will let the light in because over the next few days I do believe we've got some sunshine coming and this will help let the, let the warmth of the sun onto the, onto the fruit and ripen them up. It's similar to what we do in the greenhouse, we're just doing it outside and a little later. There you are, look. As long as the, the sun can get to them and just keep them warm. This here lot on the ends, they're, they're not going to make any fruit now, so we'll take those off as well. It'll stop the plant wasting energy into those that we don't want. That's what I'll do later today, I'll get them all taken off. Now while we're here, 
some of the peppers that we've grown outdoors are also ripening so we're going to take those as well now we've had such a good summer that we have some nice peppers ripening through quite a few green ones but we'll take those green if the weather breaks okay but at the moment while they're ripening we'll leave them on and um, so we'll take these off you see that will finish off as soon as it's the warmth for the house they'll finish there you go two nice peppers there look a bit dirty because they're grown outdoors but that'll soon wash off we have a couple of red ones here that are turning nicely so we'll take those as well okay there we go one and oops i've knocked the cap off just a moment and i think i think this one that'll soon color up now that one there are a couple of red ones as well let's cut it first this one's very small but it's colored up so we'll take that one as well one There are a couple of uh, red ones there. Now that seems to be all the peppers at the moment from from down here. This seems an awful lot on them still to come. But if it gets too cold, we'll pick them as green down here and then use them because still just as nice. Now we've got quite a few peppers in the greenhouse to pick. So we'll go up to the greenhouse and pick those now. Now we've made it up to the greenhouse, which is now a pepper house, not a tomato house no more. As you can see, there's quite a few peppers in here already. Now what I need to do really is to get everything picked I can, then I can make some room because I want to put a table in here for putting some plants on. Pick as many as we can and then perhaps just move the plants a little bit tighter okay while we're up at the greenhouse just thought we'll have a quick look at the potatoes in the boxes these are the potatoes in the boxes doing very well they look beautiful growing well i won't top them up anymore i water them every two or three days if they start to dry out i don't want to get them too wet now this is what we've harvested this morning. These are the peppers out of the greenhouse. Don't they look nice? So thank you Stu. We've had an excellent crop off them mate, well done. This is the crop from actually down the garden, the outdoors, except for the melon. That's another melon off the melon in the greenhouse. We've been eating them, they're very sweet. Uh, there's two calibris, a cabbage, a few of those late tomatoes and a few of the peppers out in the garden as well. And not forgetting three eggs from the girls. Now we just popped inside the shed to do another update on the LED light. Very pleased with it up to now. Cuttings are doing well. I do believe some of them are now actually growing, so they must have put a root on now to be growing. Shrub cuttings that really needed a little bit of bottom meat. They're struggling a little bit, but they're still with us. The real loss we've had is a couple of the fuchsias, but you will get that in the fuchsias anyway. These trays are doing well. They're all fuchsias as well. These are trailing fuchsias. They're doing all right. I do have to keep missing them every now and again. The Escalonia maybe two lot have failed, but they again they needed the bottom heat really. Now, as Diane's doing the tomatoes in the house, she's been using quite a few pots of basil. So when she's taken the tops off, we've been popping them under the light. As you can see, they soon get growing again, so we'll be able to grow them up a little in here and take them up and reuse them again. 
that will be it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. We got a few more jobs done. Now, thank you very much for subscribing. We do appreciate it. And as always, thank you for watching. And hopefully, we'll see you next week. Bye now. <laughs>